Yeah, I'll always be a metalhead. They, nothing can take that away from me. Right. I mean, not jail, not people, not religion, not anything. I'll always be a metalhead. Metalhead, metalhead, metalhead. Metalhead, metalhead. You're listening to The Great Metal Debate Podcast. Welcome back, Metalheads, to another episode of the Great Metal Debate Podcast. I'm your man, Xander, back with another album review. Today, we'll be looking at the new release from the French technical deathcore band, Solar Eruption, with their incredible debut, The Demon's House, which was dropped independently on January 27th. I don't talk much about this genre, but when I do, there is usually something special about it. I have known about this band for a couple years now through social media and them releasing singles on YouTube over the last few years. But when I heard that they were putting out a full length, I knew that I had to check it out. If you are a fan of a band like Shadow of Intent, this band is definitely for you. Everything starts off the way a usual deathcore record normally begins. Although I actually enjoyed this ominous intro quite a bit as it has a spooky horror movie vibe with its old haunted house piano. The tune is eerie and should remind you a little bit of an old slasher film. There is even a choir in the background to give it that extra boost. That way the listener knows exactly what they are getting into. And what they are getting into is a Red Room, which is the name of the crushing first track on this album. Right away we are thrown headfirst into rapid fire blast beats and fast vocal delivery. There is a slight symphonic feel to most of these songs. There is a slight symphonic feel to most of these songs, along with the very futuristic sounding guitar work, which is certainly a nice touch. As always, I apologize in advance if my American dialect cannot properly pronounce the names of these talented musicians. But I enjoyed those moments a lot when guitarist Joe DRGT and Flo Haurenu give us the finger tapping technique. They are fun to listen to and unique when compared to the monotonous chugs of regular deathcore bands. As a final note relating to the song, I must address that this song is accompanied by a brutal music video. Those of you who don't know, a red room is an undisclosed location where people are tortured to death in front of a camera for a website live stream, particularly for the dark web. Then we have another heavy hitter of a song titled UFO, which features the vocalist Dan Watson, who used to be in Enterprise Earth and is now in a band called Mere Lore. Before I go any further, I must address how insanely fast their drummer Jason Waidu is. He sounds like he could be a programmed drum machine, but he also has the skills to use every single drum on his kit while making a smooth rhythm and maintaining a consistent 400 BPM. However, the biggest highlight of the song is his breakdown, where all the music stops and the vocals continue, but the rest of the band comes back with a vengeance, almost bringing us into a slam territory. I can't tell who is who, as the band has a duet of vocalists, but whoever it was sounded absolutely guttural. Moving on to the next two tracks, the band has treated their fans to a double music video for their songs Bloody Mary and Suffocation. I can see why they did this, as Bloody Mary is a full song, but Suffocation is only a 30 second follow up. Bloody Mary, shit, I just said her name three times, oh well. At least I didn't do it consecutively in a dark room in front of a mirror at midnight. I hope I'm safe. Anyway, this song is even heavier than the last. The main vocalist, who appears to be Hunter Black, based on the videos, gives it his all, as well as Asmo CTR, who hits us with those nasty gutturals. For those 30 seconds of suffocation, we get pure musical chaos. Hell is unleashed through a blast of harsh vocals, and the rest of the band gives our ears as much intensity as possible. Now that I have covered all the hits, let's talk about the next track, which is Smoke in My Head. It begins with a beautiful piano intro, followed by some gnarly vocals, which flow surprisingly well together. The high-pitched screeching vocals never overstay their welcome and provide listeners with an extra hellish tone. Fatal Abduction kicks off with a similar way, but taking things in a different direction musically with a more symphonic approach, which will no doubt give some septic flesh vibes. 
This goes on for a little longer than the previous song, but will still give you that deathcore screaming and machine gun blast beats that you came for. After the halfway point, we get three separate breakdowns to keep us invested. Solar Eruption is another one of those deathcore bands that don't need constant breakdowns to keep people entertained, but we are glad that they shake it up every once in a while. Price to Pay was a song that was released as a single over a year ago, but found its way to the full length. It came to us in the form of a lyrical video, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this one. Although I will say it definitely deserves to be here. Kushisaki Anna is a song that gives us a nice guitar solo. But while we are on the subject of instruments, one band member I have not talked about yet is bassist Alex MZY. Throughout this album, he has given us a very small taste of what he can do, and the first few seconds of Coincidence of Matter shows off his skills. But 30 seconds in, and we hear one of those two vocalists pig squeal as part of his harsh gutturals. That isn't even the best part of the song. The Indian breakdown has a stop and start pattern where the music chugs in and out. At this point, the vocals just become another instrument and help add to the slams. This band still has a few more tricks up its sleeve, though. Next on the list of extreme activities seem to be breaking out of a maximum security prison with The Great Escape. The first minute and a half is the sound of a buzzer and jail bars sliding open, followed by a man panting while freeing himself of chains, along with the loud footsteps of him running. The guy must have made it out of the confines of the prison walls rather quickly, as we immediately hear rain and thunder. Suspenseful music played on a piano come back to fill in the gap, and it makes me wonder who is playing the instrument. According to the band, they worked with someone by the name of Francesco from Midas Productions, who performed all the orchestral arrangements. Once the intro is over, the remaining six minutes of the song can begin pumping your eardrums with a cacophony of blast beats, seven-string guitar riffs, and of course, vocals. It is nothing but pure chaos for the rest of the duration. As we get closer to the end of this record, we get more technical with the guitar playing for the song Dust. Personally, I enjoy the audible breaths before the breakdown in this one. But finally, the last track, We Are Enemies, wastes absolutely zero time before annihilating your ears. It's a short, crushing, and symphonic conclusion. The Demon's House is a standout release that musically and vocally surpasses most of the typical generic deathcore that the mainstream has to offer. Deathcore still isn't my favorite genre, but I can certainly acknowledge the amount of effort that went into making this solid album. Seeing as how I would rate most deathcore to be a bland 4 to 5 out of 10, I'm going to give these guys a 7. The symphonic elements make this an enjoyable and soothing listening experience. Be sure to show your support by following Solar Eruption on all social media platforms, and their music is available on pretty much every music streaming app.